I'm interrupting my five-part series this week to carry on with our 12-part series of the year of every first Sunday of the month, where we're talking about we are more than conquerors. Now, a person on a railroad track hears a train approaching, and they look behind them, they see the train, and a lot of times they freeze in fear. The train outruns its sound, which means by the time you hear it, it is virtually on top of you. If a train engineer sees you on a track, he or she will blow the whistle, and engineers tell us that it takes two blasts for the average person to get their attention if they're on the track. There's an optical illusion when you're on a track. When you see the train coming, it looks as if it's traveling half as fast as it actually is, and it looks two times farther away than it actually is. It just happens. For most people, when they see danger, the first thing they feel is fear. And the reaction to fear, in a lot of cases, is either to freeze or to panic. Now, we shouldn't be too upset with ourselves if we fear danger, because that's a human, natural human response. Fear is there for a good purpose. We should fear danger or respect danger, but we shouldn't fear it in such a way that it takes control of our life and causes us to do things that we normally wouldn't do. What fear of danger does most times is cause widespread panic. You hear of fires in a public place, and you hear oftentimes that more people die from being trampled to death by people trying to get away from the fire than what the fire actually kills. That's sad. Because they tell me that most times there's enough time for the people to get out. Not always, but most times if people stayed aware and thoughtful, they could all get out. When there's shootings and things like that, even natural disasters, people panic. Because the first instinct is to save your own life. But in 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 that, a lot of people get hurt. Now it is, like I said, it's a natural instinct, a natural reaction. But oftentimes the fear of danger is more deadly than the danger itself. And you say, what? It is. Some of that's because of the value that we put on life. Our society has put more importance on this life than all other generations or centuries together. Did you know that at one time, to die was respectable? To offer your life was nothing for someone to do for someone else. But in our society, we treasure life a lot. Health reports tell us us that there are record numbers of people today that suffer from anxiety. And a lot of that anxiety is the result of perceived threats and dangers. Not even the real danger itself, just perceived as danger or a threat. And so in our world, I don't think we have to perceive them because there is enough dangers in this world that we live in. But fear of those dangers shouldn't determine the actions of our life. There are people who won't go to a mall shopping because someone might be there with a gun and shoot up the place. Or someone might not go to a concert because it might be, uh, you might become a victim of terrorism or all of these kinds of things. But Paul tells us in Romans 8 and 35 that we are more than conquerors over danger. So how do we conquer the fear of danger, especially when we cannot do anything about some of the danger that we face? I want to start by sharing that Paul understood danger. If you read 2 Corinthians 11, 
26 and following, well, in that whole passage, in that whole chapter, you read about Paul and all of the dangers in his life. Because no matter what century you live in, no matter what area you live in in the world, there are dangers in life. Some of them may be different one to the next, but there's dangers. We maybe don't have a lot of poisonous snakes here, but they do in Australia. We may not have a lot of poisonous spiders that'll kill us here, but they do in Australia. But we have dangers here that they don't have there. And so dangers everywhere. Our life is always full of danger. Paul says, I suffered much at sea, dangers at sea from rivers, dangers of drowning because of shipwrecks, etc., from people like robbers, false prophets trying to undermine me, people trying to kill me, stone me, beat me, all of these things. And I have those dangers every day as I walk through this world. He walked through wildernesses. I don't know if you've ever tried to walk through a wilderness, but it's pretty desolate and it can be dangerous. There's a lot of animals out there that can get you and it's not a lot of fun. He did that. He was in danger of lack of food. We don't experience that. He was in danger of lack of water. We don't experience that. Exposure to cold without proper clothing. And, and the list goes on. Read it. He, he went through so much. His life was in danger all the time. And I believe that makes Paul a little bit of an expert when it comes to teaching about how to handle danger. Romans 8, he says, we're more than conquerors over all those things. You know why I could write that to the, to the Roman Christians? Because he conquered all those things in Christ Jesus. He conquered them all in his life. He faced them all. He dealt with them all. And so he isn't just flippantly saying, get over yourself. Quit worrying about danger. Quit being concerned about danger. Don't fear danger. He's not saying that. He's saying, we have conquered it. There's a difference. We have put danger into submission in our lives because of who we are. In Acts chapter 27, we have a detailed account of the shipwreck that Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians. He's on his way to Rome, but he has warned the centurion guarding him that that trip wouldn't end well if they set sail. You see, there's times of the year when you get out on the uh, Mediterranean and there are certain winds and things come up at certain times of the year. And still today, they won't travel certain routes at certain times because of that. And so Paul says, it's a wrong time of the year to be setting sail. And the centurion is like, well, I'll tell the, the, the guy that's running the ship, he says. And he tells the captain, and the captain says, that prisoner, what does he know? I'm captain of this ship. And we're going to sail. And Paul, I can't imagine what was going through Paul's mind. But anyways, they set sail. And just like Paul predicted, they hit a storm. And the ship starts getting torn apart. And they're all panicking on this ship because they're all going to die. And Paul says, listen guys, don't panic. Here's what you do. God's going to take care of this. He's going to help us out. He's going to protect all of us. We're not going to die. No one's going to die today on God's watch. And so just listen to me. And finally, they listened to the prisoner. And all Paul did was trust in Jesus. Keep his focus on Jesus, on the true plan of life. And so Paul knew what it was like to face danger in his life and to have conquered it. So there will always be dangers in our lives, whether it's 2,000 years ago, whether it's today, or whether it's in the future. It'll be there. That's a guarantee. It is part of living life on earth. I looked up on the internet, just out of curiosity, to see what people would say is the greatest dangers in the world today. 
Now, you're not supposed to laugh. Don't, it's not funny. No, I'm just kidding. But it was interesting because the first thing that came out, the very first thing I read was from 2014. Someone said, the biggest danger in the world is Trump becoming president of the United States. I went, wow, that's a small world you live in. <laughs> Another one said that, uh, that um, Britain leaving the European market was another one. And in the top 10, all the threats that Putin is uttering wasn't even on the map. I don't know what, why. But the third one was the danger of jihad terrorism. And I think all of us know that is a danger. But it's not a danger just in the Middle East. It's not a danger just in Europe or in Asia. It is a worldwide danger because they want dominance in the world. It's the way it is. So terrorism changes how people go about living their lives. And those that are behind the terrorism know that that is part of their goal, to strike fear. They know that. So they want to strike fear in the hearts of people because people will panic, people will react, instead of act, and, and they can have their way. They know maybe from their own experience that people will do those things and actually become irrational. So terrorism is a huge danger in our world today. But it doesn't have to control how we live. It doesn't have to determine what we do. There are natural disasters that are very dangerous in our world today. Maybe not so much in Alberta. We're, we're pretty blessed here with not getting a whole lot of extreme weather or anything. But depending on where you live, there's all kinds of things that are dangerous. I had to kind of chuckle because when there was all that smoke in the air and the sun looked like a little orange ball, people were freaking out and saying the end of the world was coming. I thought it was kind of funny. But... Um, but there are actually real dangers in the world. Natural disasters like avalanches and, and mudslides and tornadoes and hurricanes, and they're very dangerous. You live down in the, in the Bible Belt down there in the States, man, there's tornadoes hit that place all the time and people are killed. You live in the, uh, down by the Gulf and you get hurricanes or along the East Coast, you get hurricanes all the time and people are killed in hurricanes. There's earthquakes, and all of these things are devastating to life. And people choose where they live based on, some people choose where they live based on those things because they're common to certain places. But we can choose not to let those to cause us anxiety in our life. We can accept the fact that they are part of life that we have to deal with. There are many other dangers too. Have you ever traveled Highway 21? It's dangerous. You can die in a car. I know you just jump in your car and you think, I'm going to Edmonton today, and away you go. And all of a sudden, bang, it's an accident. And maybe you're not anymore. Or maybe you're maimed or, or whatever it is. That it's dangerous on our highways. But we take it for granted. It can be dangerous to go to the grocery store. You might buy some vegetables and end up with E. coli poisoning or, or something like that, or food poisoning. You can get that from a restaurant. Wherever we turn, there are dangers in life. We're not going to escape them. They're part of life in this world. They're lurking around every corner. You and I can walk out of this building, and if the building doesn't collapse on you, you can get hit by a car that comes off the street. Or a tree falling over can hit you and kill you. Or anything. I mean, there's dangers everywhere. Mike, across the street here, was working one day at his work. He never thought that it would happen, but the machine blew apart. And he just, and he just about lost his leg, just about lost his life. But you don't expect it, but there's, the danger's always there. It can happen. 
So how do you and I go about living our daily lives and not being consumed with the fear of danger that lurks in all the shadows around us? Paul was able to do it. We should be able to do it. I think the first thing that we noticed with Paul on the shipwreck was that no matter what danger he was facing, he never lost his focus. His focus was on the task at hand. It was doing the work of the Lord. He was focused on Jesus and the kingdom. And he even went along with them when they said, now nah, you're being silly, knowing that they were going to get in trouble. He went along with them. But then he started telling them about God and how their idols were nothing. They, they were hopeless and helpless, but that the God of heaven could take care of things for them, could take care of their shipwreck. We want to remember to keep our focus in dangerous situations in this world. Jesus is what's important. The other stuff around us isn't all that important. It doesn't matter that much. Sure, we need to live and we need to have a, a house, a roof over our head and things. But really, how important is the rest? And how important is Jesus? Paul kept that focus. We don't want to hang on to this life so much that we put our eternal life in, je in jeopardy or put it in danger. Like Paul, we lift God up in every situation. We lift Jesus up in every situation. And it doesn't matter what the danger is because we've already conquered it. You see, danger isn't danger for you and I like it is danger for the world. And we need to understand that. We need to trust in God completely. You know, if you die... What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Go to heaven? How terrible is that? But you know, we look at dying as losing a bunch instead of gaining something. When dying is actually gaining something. In 2 Corinthians 5, 8, 9, Paul says, Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make our aim to please him. See, Paul says, I want to be with the Lord. That's where I want to be. And that's where I'm going to be eventually. But I'll do whatever it takes here to get there. And it doesn't matter what gets thrown at me in this world. It's not going to affect me the way it affects people in the world. Because I've already conquered it. I'm going home one day. And if it takes me home, that's the way it is. I trust God. And God can be trusted. In fact, God knows the whole picture. God is the whole picture. And we don't always have the whole picture. So God knows what's best. So trusting him helps us to realize and accept that the dangers aren't that bad aren't that dangerous because even if it takes my life I'm going home the third thing is to remember that to remember that our reward is not here our victory is not here our treasure is not here our treasures in heaven and that's what we're lay that's where we're laying up treasure is in heaven and so it's not about this world. None of us are going to escape physically from this ball alive that we live on. We're not going to escape it. We are all going to go through the transfer process of death, burial, and resurrection. We have to. Just like Jesus did. So remember, our reward is not this life. It's a life to come. And when dangers happen, we can face them with clear thought, not being rattled by the dangers because we've already conquered that danger. The reason people panic is because they're afraid to die 
because they don't have any hope after. That's why people panic. They don't want to lose what they have here. But we've already lost it because it's not that important. What's important to us is what's up there. That's what's important. And so we don't have to panic. Danger doesn't have to control how we live our lives or what we do. It just doesn't have to control that. How are we supposed to handle danger when it happens? The first thing we do is not to lose focus and keep faith in God. Without focus and faith, we'll become rattled, we'll react rather than act in the face of danger. And like the rest of the world, we won't look any different. Danger is going to happen. So prepare yourself to act in that way in the face of danger. That's what Paul is saying in Romans 8. We can, what can harm us? What, can, what danger can destroy us? What danger can separate us from the love of Christ. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father and he intercedes for us. He died and was raised to life again. Death cannot touch him. And if we're in him, death doesn't touch us. Oh, physical death, yeah. But death doesn't really touch us because it's just a transfer to heaven. Is there any danger in this world that can top Jesus? Not one. You will not find one. So when danger confronts us, we can be calm, we can be thoughtful, and we can face it like no one else in the world. And we'll be okay. You know, when I boxed, most people when they box go like this. The one thing you have to do when you box is be able to keep your eyes open so you can see the hit coming. But because of the fear of the hit, people close their eyes. <coughs> You've got to keep your eyes open so you can move and see where you can put your hit. If you blink, if you close your eyes, you're done. You're a sitting target. I was taught that. And danger works the same way. Most people fear and cower or run away or or want to hide from it. You can't do that. It doesn't work. It gets you every time. And the way we can do that is by realizing that we've already conquered every danger in the world. The victory is ours. Jesus has conquered it, and there is nothing that can conquer him. And if we're in him, there is nothing that can conquer us. In Christ, we are more than conquerors over everything, including dangers in this world. Paul says there's nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ because he has conquered and nothing can stand against Christ. The, the same is true for you and I if we're in Christ. No danger is too threatening, too dangerous, or strong enough to separate us from Christ. And if we have that confidence, if we have that faith, we can stand in the face of any danger. Even if someone puts a gun in our face and says, denounce Christ or die, we can stand because we already have the victory. If we can help you with that this morning or with anything that, that you're struggling with, let us know while we stand and sing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. 
Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Maybe see that.